G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Thursday afternoon here in Australia and the market has jumped up significantly. So, a whole lot of sort of, you know, it's hard to say. Are they shakeouts happening at the moment? Are these fake outs happening at the moment? Or is it just part of, you know, again, a bullish market? They don't always just constantly go up. They go down, but I mean, look, we jumped up 6.5% in, you know, basically 24 hours. This was 1.9 something trillion, and now we are over $2 trillion again. And I mean, you go down here, and look, I brought up the charts of how we've performed. Last three months, some things have done okay, not everything, but I mean, the last month, whoo, good Lord. I mean, we've had some really big movers there, and the last seven days and the last 24 hours as well, things are looking pretty good. But I mean, BTC dominance, it is getting lower. Again, you know, this bull run is starting to heat back up. But, you know, we'll get to the charts. This still could be a fake out. Let's not get too ahead of ourselves at the moment. I don't think it's a fake out, but it definitely could be a fake out. And again, as I say on my channel all the time, I've always got what I think is going to happen. So I'll plan for if what I think is going to happen happens and a plan for what if that doesn't happen and it goes, you know, in another direction or even worse, in the complete opposite direction to what I think. All right, volume up, very nice. BTC price, we are above $47,000 again. I did think this might go down to sort of around 42000 We didn't get too far off, but we have the weekend coming, so it's very close. So this still could turn around and we could go down lower again, again. Never financial advice, that's not what I'm offering you. This is always just my personal opinion. I'm just someone who really likes cryptocurrencies and I decided to make a channel and talk about it. Don't take my advice as personal advice. Just take it as an opinion of someone who has been in the space for a little while and nothing more. But also nothing less. I like to think I've got a pretty good opinion. It's far from perfect. I've made many mistakes before and I get things wrong. But generally, I've been doing all right in the crypto space. How long that will last, who knows. Hopefully a lifetime, that would be nice. All right, gas prices have actually come down, which is interesting. I thought they would have gone up with the bullishness, but I would have to say so far, it seems like EIP1559 has held the gas prices down because, I mean, when we've seen things get bullish like this before, it's gone way higher. I mean, we've had gas prices of hundreds of dollars, $300, $400, now again, we do need to remember this is basic transactions. So if you're really just sending a little bit of money here and there, ETH here, ETH there, something like that. Uniswap, I think it's still up around $40, $50 at the moment to do a smart contract swap. But look, $40, $50, while not great, is not three or $400. So yeah, re remember that. We need to keep it in perspective a little bit at times and we're still waiting on ETH 2.0 to be finalized. Some people say it might come, you know, in the later half of this year. We're getting close to the later half of this year already. But a lot of people think it's going to be early 2022. But some people say it might even be, you know, later in 2022. You know, fingers crossed it comes sooner rather than later. But more so, fingers crossed it all plays out as we all sort of hope it is uh, supposed to play out. If it doesn't, that could be uh, really drastic for the space. But anyway, I mean, have a look at this. You know, particularly the last 24 hours is what we generally focus on. It's a bit of a mixed bag, but generally we got a lot of nice movers in there. All right, what's, perform what's performed the best in the last 24 hours? Swiss Borg, 31%. Content uh, Value Network, 22%. The Graph, 20%. Algorand, 20%. Ada, nearly 20%. Safe Moon, good lord, up nearly uh, a little bit over 15%, but that number hasn't changed. It's still just two. I've never seen this anything other than two or three, no matter how much it goes up and down. But look, I haven't been following Safe Moon either, and I'm, I personally am not touching it. Phantom, Kasama, look, even Matic, nice, finally starting to move up. Things are getting very exciting in this space. That also has me concerned. I'll be completely honest, I am nervous. Because when things get super bullish like this, and it's, you know, it's not even that super bullish yet, quite often there's a big correction. Because everybody's starting to think it's just so easy to make money in this market. And then all of a sudden, boom, it turns the other way. Again, not trying to fight anyone, don't want to scare anyone, but it is, you know, yeah, I've been around the space long enough to know that you don't see things last like this for too long before there is a big correction. But in saying that, 
maybe this is just all the smart money finally sort of piling back in because they were sitting on the sidelines with a lot of stable coins. We know that there was a ton of stable coins. Now all of a sudden they're being put back into coins and this could just be the early mark of that. It's very hard to know, but I mean, the gains are amazing. What about losses though? I mean, the entire market's up 6.5%. Is there any, you know, bad losses in the top 100? Because that's what I focus on. Oh, there we go. Luna having a correction. It was always going to have a correction. So, I mean, this went from sort of $6. So, you know, it's done quite well. So, it could retrace for a little while longer. <clears throat> Excuse me. Luna is something I'd like to buy more of. I just don't want to buy it at $30 considering I've, you know, originally was buying it around sort of $6 or $7. It's pretty hard to jump on something. But also, Adam, you know, having a pullback. And again, a lot of these ones here, Solana, not too much. So there's only a couple of pullbacks. These are coins that generally pumped, you know, fairly well in the last sort of week or so. And of course, they have to have a bit of a correction. So that's what's happening here. All right, let's go and have a look at the Bitcoin chart. As we can see, it is above the 200 day moving average again. So at the moment, we just keep sort of playing with it. We're above, we're below, we're above, we're below, we're above. Now again, with the weekend coming, I spoke about this, I'm not gonna be surprised if this doesn't simply roll over and we come back down and retest this line here. And if not this line, maybe sort of 42,000. And we could even have a wick that comes down a whole lot lower into the 39,000s or something like that. Over the weekend, that wouldn't surprise me, but I'm not expecting the market to roll over and go lower. There's just too much big money still getting in. You know, institutions and that, they're in before all the sort of retail uh, get in. And it's not to say there's no retail here. There absolutely is retail here, but it's the early retail who are also jumping in, you know, when the institutions and that are getting in now they're not all in here a lot of institutions got in here and before but there still are institutions making plays in cryptocurrency right now and that's what we need to remember should bitcoin break over 64 let's say sixty five thousand dollars, we can just sort of you know round it up it's going to go crazy it really will start to move very very fast Unfortunately, retail, which is what they call dumb money, and I don't like that term. I like to call it new money or uneducated money. Unfortunately, that's when they pile in. When things are pumping, they're like, this is when I've got to get in. Now's, you know, I'm going to jump in when it's at all-time highs. And if you jump in at $65,000, you might do all right because it could possibly go to $100,000 plus. But it might also only get up to, I don't know, seventy eighty thousand dollars and turn over and then start to have a big 70 80 percent correction or something like that that's something we need to keep in mind but i do think once we again more so this fifty two thousand dollar mark i think things will move fast should we get above here but it will really start to move fast when bitcoin breaks above that sixty five thousand dollar level that is when a lot of new money is going to come in and unfortunately a lot of it will be retail some will be institutional money just not the real smart institutional money uh, and yeah, this will start to move very fast. And you know, there or, there is the possibility that we go into some super cycle that lasts for a decade. Definitely possible. I just I don't know if I'm sold on it yet. I I haven't discounted it. I just don't know. But I'm still here. Yeah, I'd be careful at piling too much money into Bitcoin or in cryptocurrencies when everything as a is at all time highs. That's probably when I'm more looking to start taking some profits. Now again, it doesn't mean I'm cashing out if Bitcoin goes to 65,000. Uh, I plan on keeping most of my Bitcoin long term, but there is a position of it that I will start to sell. You know, it's more based on time than anything and how I feel the market's going, but I definitely will be taking some money. Like 100,000, if we get to 100,000, I'll be starting to take, you know, profits more aggressively at a hundred thousand i'm still not sold that we'll actually get there yet i think we'll probably go to just a little bit under a hundred thousand because everyone's going to try and front run it but then you know there's going to be people selling at seventy thousand eighty thousand ninety thousand you name it whether that selling pressure is enough to push the market down considering there'll probably be a whole lot of buying pressure people will just be trying to pile into bitcoin at those prices again the new money the uneducated money all right, moving on, a couple of interesting stories. So Polkadot's Kasama, they've announced the next five parachain auctions. So what we need to remember is Polkadot 
has no uh, canary chains, yet, or not sorry, canary chains, has no para chains yet. Kasama is currently doing them. So they come onto Kasama, that is the test net. Everything's getting tested on Kasama. If it does well, then they are going to be able to become a parachain on Polkadot. I'm, I'm still really bullish on Polkadot. I think it has still plenty of upside to go. It hasn't, yeah, again, got any parachains yet. You know, the smart contracts and all that are very minimal and things building on it are still very minimal. I get the feeling once it's ready to go, though, it's going to do extremely well. I am bullish on it. You know, Dr. Gavin Woods is the creator. He was very instrumental in Ethereum as well, you know, along with Charles Hoskinson. Uh, and Vitalik Buterin, all very smart guys. I think all of these will have uh, a space uh, in this long term. Again, never financial advice, just my personal opinion. But yeah, I am really bullish on Polkadot and I'm hoping it does well. It's one of the bigger plays that I have outside of Ethereum and Cardano. I don't really, I haven't got into too many layer ones outside of there. It's not that I haven't gone into any, but Polkadot was one where I built myself a better position. And again, it's still very small, probably 1%, 2% of my entire portfolio. I, I focus mainly on Bitcoin and Ethereum. And then, yeah, I've gone, yeah, searching for other things after that. And I liked what I saw on Polkadot. So keeping an eye out for this. And again, so that's just the schedule for the next five yet. We're still, you know, probably a while away from Polkadot actually having parachains. And that will be a very interesting time when that happens. All right, so there's been a bit of a rug pull on Solana. Now, not Solana itself, on Lunar Yield. Not Terra Luna, so don't get it confused. Lunar Yield, which is a yield farming platform that is running on Solana's uh, layer one. And people are a little bit worried that it's done a rug pull and $6.7 million worth of funds have gone. So decentralized finance protocol Lunar Yield has gone offline. Some are attributing the move offline to a rug pull. And an anonymous source told Coindesk that over $6.7 million in assets has been taken. So look, this isn't good for Solana. This definitely isn't good for anyone that, you know, put money into Una, uh, Una. <laughs> oh God, you I was going to say it again, <laughs> Luna Yield. That's I haven't done any real yield farming other than, you know, like big ones, sort of like Aave, earning that kind of yield. I haven't done all these other little ones going for the crazy kind of returns and that I just don't trust. I'm very suspicious person in general and I've most likely missed out on unbelievable gains, but I've also missed out on, uh, you know, some of these rug pulls that has happened as well. So as I say, just be careful in this space. Crypto in general is very, very new. Again, a decade is not a long time. It's a, a new emerging asset class, but these DeFi platforms and yield platforms that are coming out they are super new like most of them aren't even a year old and so they generally get to you know a position where there's enough cash in there but it's starting to slow down and if it's there's a rug pull going to happen then that's what happens the teams go right out it's slowing down it's all getting a bit scary now it's not pumping anymore <whistles> out gets the the rug gets pulled and then everyone loses their money I mean, 6.7 million is not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but it is a lot to the people that put their money in there and, and that will really hurt. And so that's disappointing and not great for Solana. Not that it will really affect Solana itself, but it's not good. Similar to Binance Smart Chain, you know, they've had a number of rug pulls happen on uh, of projects that were released on the Binance Smart Chain. So concerning. This I found super interesting. So Coinbase, they are adding... 500 million, so half a billion dollars worth of crypto to its balance sheets. So a lot of people would have thought, well, aren't they all crypto? No, they're not all crypto, but they are adding crypto to their balance sheets. So, you know, they've got their stocks and then there's money invested uh, by members. And then they, as we showed the other day, they've got themselves a big cash position. I think it's four point something billion dollars worth of cash they now have. And they are also adding 500 million in crypto to their balance sheet. And I would say a lot of it would be uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum. Uh, and then after that, you know, Solana, I think they had a bit of a position in that. Uh, Polygon and a few other things like that. You know, who knows exactly what they have there. 
but that is a lot of money that they're adding, 500 million. And I mean, it showed down here, they had somewhere in a range of 365 million in crypto, and 230 million was Bitcoin, 53 million in Ethereum, and there we go, 49 million, million in stable coins, and 35 million in other crypto assets. So yeah, <laughs> it'd be funny if they didn't have a lot of crypto. I thought they would have had more in all fairness, but I guess, They've been around long enough and they know how volatile it is, but that should also tell you something as well, that they have a position in stable coins. And at the moment, I think it was up to $4 billion worth of stable coins. I think they uh, now had, I can't remember the exact amount, but I was talking about it yesterday. I'd have to go back and check, but they are doing the smart thing. I don't know about having that much in stable coins. We'll have to wait and see whether that's the right move or not but they do have stable coins because they can earn the interest. They're gonna put it out there on Aave, you know, all these other places, BlockFi, Celsius, you name it, and earn themselves a good yield and probably things outside of what we even know that provide good returns. So they have a amount of stable coins and they also have an amount of crypto and particularly a, a big position in Bitcoin and Ethereum. You know, basically, well, 34 million, yeah, I mean, that would make up, you know, sort of, two thirds if not more between Bitcoin and Ethereum uh, and then a small position you know in other cryptos smaller position I wouldn't say small all right Ethereum scaling solution Polygon this I love Polygon I really do love Polygon and it is you know I'm so glad I've said this before that number one I bought it Number two that I didn't sell and I've just stick with it because it keeps going from strength to strength. We already heard that they bought out uh, Hermes ZK rollups and they're merging that. Well now they are going to become a DAO. So Ethereum scaling solution Polygon launches a DAO to unite DeFi platforms. Polygon will tap its $100 million DeFi fund to promote interoperability and adoption and airdrop a new governance token to its users. So if you're a Polygon uh, holder, you're gonna get this new token. Look, I think a lot of this uh, is sort of marketing as well, and it's good marketing. Polygon, did, it was originally Matic, so Matic did extremely well when they changed to Polygon. Now Polygon, I don't know if they're gonna stick with that name or you know get, come up with a, an entirely new name. Maybe it stays with Polygon, but again, another token. It's I don't think it's just a marketing ploy, but it is a good marketing tool that they're using. It's constantly changing, new updates, new things coming, because as soon as a platform goes stagnant and nothing else is happening, that's when people will get bored of it and they'll just move on to the next new shiny thing. And I'm not saying Polygon's just a shiny thing, but very, very smart by them to do this. And I look forward to seeing you know, what the new token is. And again, ZK rollups and all that kind of stuff. Such a great platform, such a great team new innovations constantly coming in every couple of months, new partnerships more so. They're coming like every couple of weeks, every couple of months as partnerships here, there and everywhere. And now again, moving to a DAO, which is, you know, that's where everything's heading at the moment. So a decentralized autonomous organization as opposed to something that's centralized and has, you know, a governing body or one governing body that is, or, you know, one sort of leader, uh, CEO or something like that in charge. All right, last but not least, Binance, they just can't catch a break, wow. So $100 million funding round for Binance US falls through on regulatory concerns. And it seems this is the reason that Brian Brooks left as well. So the failed funding round also prompted Binance US CEO Brian Brooks to the surprise decision to step down after serving as its executive for just three months. So yeah, Binance, I'm... I don't hold any BNB tokens, but I use Binance as an exchange. I really hope they can survive. I'm, I'm sure they will, but it just, yeah, the amount of, and I don't know if this would be considered FUD, I guess it maybe sort of could be, but the amount of bad press that is out there at the moment, uh, but it's, you know, it's still there, it's still hanging on, it's still a great platform. But yeah, hopefully it can get through all its regulation hurdles and, you know, CZ can, turn Binance into the decentralized platform that he wants to and all the rest of it. But wow, pretty much every story you read right now about Binance is just, yeah, it is uh, dramatic and it sounds disastrous. You know, 
Binance US isn't going to go broke because they didn't get this. This was a funding round, so they're just trying to drum up more money. They've still got plenty of money, but yeah, definitely not great. All right, look, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. La, la, la. Be kind to one another. Completely struggling. But just remember, we've got a weekend coming, and I think it's definitely possible that we dip down more. Not saying it will, but it could. Beware, that could be a buying opportunity as well. All right, that's it from me. I'm out.